first of all, let me apologize. Uh, the last time I had uh, booked this place for a press conference, and unfortunately, uh, I couldn't make it due to unforeseen circumstances at the, at the time. I, I, I want to <coughs> I want to first of all uh, uh, discuss the topics which I posted. First, on the comments on the Zanu PF in our fight versus the economy, the corruption in the land barons, the Malaysia violation results, ZEC, BVR implementation, the coalition. What does this mean to politics in Zimbabwe? Comments regarding the conditions of people living with disability from Cheshire House and the update uh, on the third force. I'll first of all begin with uh, my comments on the ZANU PF in fighting versus the economy. Uh, I've been reading uh, a lot and following the events pertaining to the uh, vote of no confidence of the political commissar, uh, Saviour Kasukwere, which uh, have not surprised me because I think uh, if you do live by the sword, you will also die by the sword. So there's really nothing, uh, nothing amiss about that happening. But I think what you've got to also appreciate is um, I've never seen Savior to be the problem as an MPF, but I've always questioned the people appointing him. I think this is where the real problem is. We seem to skirt around the issue. Um, Saviour is a political commissar of the ruling party and uh, is appointed by His Excellency uh, in terms of the constitution of the PF. So he serves at the mercy of His Excellency. Let's go back to the, the expulsion and suspension of the Mujuri Kabao. You see, you have no choice but to go back to that. Uh, who was in the forefront of it? Who was doing it? Remember that I am one of the trees which was cut. And the tree that's cut never forgets. Uh, I was expelled as a result of wanting to overthrow the president uh, through the Mjuru Kabao. Nine provincial chairpersons were suspended. A vice president was uh, the vice president was expelled, the sector for administration of the party was expelled, the sector for information, Comrade Garegumba was expelled, Jablani Sibanda was expelled, uh, Comrade Mavaire was expelled, Comrade Baskiti was expelled. There was never a paging in the history of Zanu PF which had so much casualties at the end of the day. And the question that I have is, was Kasukwere in the forefront at that time? The war veterans uh, led the page of other war veterans. <laughs> like I've said, I am the tree that has been cut and I've not forgotten that. They led the page of other war veterans. Uh, we know what was happening at the time. Uh, it was definitely to address the issue of one center of power, which no one doubted at the end of the day. When that then happened, we then moved on to the very same team dividing itself. So let's say Gamma Talks was taken out, then as a result of Lacoste, if you want to call it in G40 teaming up, then G40 started paging Lacoste. Mtsangwa was equally a, a victim of that. Mtsangwa's ouster and our ouster was a barely two minute game. It did not require 10 provinces to be mobilized. The aspect of the ZANU PF constitution is very clear that the appropriate organ, the appropriate organ, must be the one that moves a vote of no confidence in the person. It does not require 10 provinces. We did not require 10 provinces. All of us were removed by the province sitting down and coming up with a signed petition 
Not a meeting where a vote of no confidence is being done like they are now. I'm going back to that. It, it did not take time. Two minutes, even when Trump was expelled, he did not, he attended the PB <coughs> meeting and was told to leave the PB meeting before a decision was even made to expel him. Kasukwere attended the PB meeting, but already a motion had been moved for a vote of no confidence. But he lasted in the meeting. <laughs> and he's still the national political commissar of the party. For us, it did not take any time at all. We were out within two minutes. So this is a situation where Lacoste and G40 gets together. Now uh, G40 fights Lacoste. Uh, so you have Gamma Talks, which has been fought. You now have got Lacoste, which has been fought. These are re real occurrence. This has got nothing to do with Lacoste. This has a lot to do with Gamma Talks at the end of the day. Gamma talks has resurfaced, and the beneficiary is Lacoste, without Lacoste doing anything. So I'm just trying to address the repercussions of paging. So if you look at most of the people who are leading uh, the vote of no confidence in the National Popular Commissar, these are the trees which were cut. Not only that, some of the trees were cut before. You now have the G40 aspect which has come through. The National Political Commissar serves at the mercy of the President. The war veterans made a lot of noise in saying that we are being used by the ruling party. And we will never be used by the ruling party. But they are forgetting that they equally were responsible for the removal of other war veterans. And no one has said anything about that to address and to say, listen, I think irregularities, things were done unconstitutionally, and I have constantly tried to engage the leadership in Zanu PF to say, but you made an error by expelling people uh, on the notion that they were cabal led by Maimi Juru wanting to overthrow the president. At no time in the history of the party, or in the history of me being chairperson, was there a meeting to remove the president and put Maimi Juru there. There was never that. We now move on. Mchangwa equally wants to overthrow the president. He's out. Now, Lacoste, uh, G40, Kasukwere is having part of structures to remove the thing president. The story remains the same. It is the actors who change, but the script remains <coughs> the same. So now that everything has come to thing fruition, you cannot doubt that the power of the party lies in the first family. Rightfully so. Masingo conference was very clear in terms of the president being the presidential candidate 2018. The party must respect that. Masingo conference was very clear in amending the constitution to have a, a female person in the presidium. And a female person in the presidium can be, even be president. So we must go about the resolutions made. And I don't know why ZANU-PF makes a lot of noise when they resolved this. And in resolving this, the First Lady is very clear about ensuring that the, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the resolution which was made to accommodate women is stuck to as the Secretary for Women's Affairs. I don't blame her. She's continuing with her job because she's the Secretary for Women's Affairs. This was the resolution to empower women. So, be, believe you me, for the first time I've seen it moving with the agenda and being uh, proactive in terms of making sure resolutions are, 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 are stuck to. ZANU-PF has a tendency of not sticking to the resolutions. So she's moving on in terms of representing women in that respect that the constitution must be amended to have a woman in the presidium at the end of the day. It would be futile for us, for any family, to believe that you know your father makes decisions without consulting your thing mother. So why would you not think that the president equally has a right to also consult his wife pertaining to any issues? I don't know why there should be a lot of noise about that. If we never understood that, then we are pretty naive in what we're doing. Personally, my, my father never makes a decision without, uh, without talking to my mother. And more important, it's my mother who delivered the decision made.
So what is so amiss about the first lady being part of the of the of, of, of the power? So I see nothing wrong with that. But what I see is a situation where quite clearly you now have a situation where the political commissar of the ruling party is is being targeted. I said it before. People have said to me, but how come you're not joining in the attack of Kasuku? I said, I can never blame Kasuku. Why should I blame Kasuku? He's appointed by the, the thing president. And the, the decision lies with the president. The, what I'm saying is that people seem to be going before His Excellency. It is the prerogative <laughs> and the pleasure of the president to fire him or to keep him there. It's pretty clear that this case is not going anywhere anymore. The chairperson of the appeals committee, uh, the Honorable Vice President Mpoko, has given a decision already before the matter comes before you that this is factional. This is Chris Mchangwa fighting Kasukwere. So already this is the chairperson of the uh, appeals committee, which means even if the disciplinary committee chaired by Chinamasa uh, reaches a decision that Kasukwere must be expelled, he can appeal to the appeals committee, and the appeals committee can reverse that. So the chairperson of the appeals committee has spoken. And in speaking, no one has, has uh, in terms of the structure of the party, has actually questioned what he has said. And I, I believe that he cannot say that without speaking to his, to, 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 to his Excellency. He has, he has the ears of His Excellency. He has the right to go and see his, the Excellency on a lot of issues happening and so forth. I, I, when, I, when, I, when I read the comments of the Honorable Vice President, um, Poco, who's the chairman of the appeals committee, I then realized that there is really nothing that's going to happen. He's already spoken, and ZANU PF purports itself to be a party that follows procedure at the end of the day. What has surprised me that do you really need to have 10 provinces mobilizing every organ of the party, mobilizing for Kasukwere to go? The appropriate organ for Kasukwere is the Politburo. Who appoints the Politburo? It's the president. In terms of Dick Mafios, he's been given a pro prohibition order, rightfully so, in terms of the constitution of the ZDPF, because the appropriate or, uh, organ for Dick Mafios is the provincial executive. <coughs> So it has already given him that, and uh, the decision has been made. But the decision in terms of Kasukwere lies with the president at the end of the day. And I think uh, the, the last political meeting, it was a matter which was supposed to be discussed. It was not discussed. The fighting continues. The mobilization continues. His Excellency is quiet on it. And my lessons in Zanu PF is that, let me remind them that, Maybe they forget that there's only one center of power. So allow the center of power to speak. You cannot have too many centers. They totally are contradicting themselves in terms of saying there's one center of power. You know, this is where, whether you like it or not, you've got to give respect to the Honorable Vice President Emerson Mnangagwa. He remains focused in doing what he's doing. He does not say anything. He's silent. He's silent. He's always at that strategy. And I've always said whether it's a strategy or that's the way he is, he remains focused, he's concentrating on command agriculture, which is critical for the economy. And I think he's more focused on dealing with the economy than this mobilization. Even if you've mobilized 23 million ZANPF people to get rid of Kasukwere, it still does not deal with the economy. So I'm talking about ZANPF versus the economy. The economy be becomes and remains the biggest opposition that ZANU-PF has. C -c Corruption remains the biggest opposition that ZANU-PF has. So for me, the question that I have is, I'm now being told that when Marshall and West province sat down uh, for my suspension, they did not recommend an ex expulsion. They are actually mean at saying that I was supposed to be suspended. So how come I was expelled? They're then telling me that no, it's, 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 it's Honorable uh, Ignatius Chombo who then changed it from suspension to expulsion. And I've been told that those thing minutes are there to say, can you suspend uh, Comrade Mliswa, not expel him? 
So how did the, the, the Popolity Bureau uh, reach a decision to expel me when the province had said I must be suspended? Let me summarize by saying the most dangerous person in Zanu PF, the dark horse in Zanu PF is Ignatius Chombo. I personally used to talk to the president about the land irregularities about Comrade Chombo when I was Secretary for Lands. When I approached the president when Comrade Chombo was Deputy Secretary for Lands in the Politburo, I went to the president and said all the land issues pertaining to white people in Marsh West are being done by Honorable Chombo. He's the one who is, who is, who is accommodating the white farmers. Uh, and Zimba, I exposed it to the president that his Zimba had more whites, uh, uh, white farmers. When they agreed that each admin district must have five, Zimba was sitting on 44. Urumwe had three who were approved, and that was a decision made. But Zimba had 44, and these all were supported and protected by Ignatius Chombo. He was the deputy secretary for lands, and I went to the president. Within no time, he was made the substantive secretary for lands, not deputy. So in turn, in turn instead of being demoted, he was promoted. <laughs> he is very close to his excellency, he is very close to the first family, and he is the dark horse. All the corruption charges uh, leveled against him has never been investigated. If there's anything, he's moved to home affairs. <laughs> where he controls the police and how can the police investigate their own minister. My expulsion, so you cannot talk about removing Kasukwere and not remove Ignatius. <coughs> it does not make sense. He's the Secretary for Administration. He's even more powerful. It's folly for people to say that not all was lost because of Saviour Kasukwere. Ronald Chindeza is married to 